Good evening from UD Arena. It's our final day of state tournament coverage here on WOSN. I'm Aaron Matthews, joined by Mark Shine and Todd Walker from 1150 WIMA joining us here. And we're going to start things off by recapping the Division Four state championship game. A 60-44 victory for the Botkins Trojans. They defeat the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Guys, I mean, the big story was the 16-0 start, Todd. And let's mm. start with you. You had the call on WIMA. What an impressive performance for Botkins starting right off the gate. Yeah, and you know what? I think they sensed that Columbus Grove has a tendency to start slow and I think they were ready. Jaden Pretty Powell was aggressive right out of the shoot. Columbus Grove had a couple of small defensive breakdowns early. They left Zane Paul wide open for a three. He buried it and once Jaden got going he's so good he's hard to shut down when they get feeling good like that and 16 nothing you know Columbus Grove did come back within two on a couple of occasions but it takes a lot of work to do that and I think Botkins had it in mind that they were going to get out to a great start and they did. Mark? Well, I would agree with that, Todd. And to finish up the points you were bringing, and that is, I think then that, that Reynolds and Bern Essler and Clement they ended up playing 32 minutes of basketball. And when you're chasing somebody for most of that 32 minutes, it takes a lot of energy out of you. And then they ran out of gas in the fourth quarter. Guys, we're just getting started. We're going to hear from both head coaches. We're going to have the press conferences for you uh, coming up here. Uh, Coach Sauter and Coach Powell both going to join us one-on-one. -on -one. We had the chance to chat with them after the game. Obviously, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat in full display here. Uh, for our WOSN audience here today. But first, let's go back to the studios. Patrick Kamler's got the, the highlights of the 60-44 Botkins win. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys. And what a Division Four contest. First of all, the highlights brought to you by Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Two local teams ready to go. It's Botkins and Columbus Grove. And boy, oh boy, did Botkins get started. They get on the board first. Jaden Pretty getting the steal and the layup to put the Trojans up and then Pretty just pulls up, knocks that down from range, 5-0. How about more action from Pretty? Feeling it again, similar spot, just like Friday, knocks that one down. Botkins up 10-0 at this point. How about more Pretty? Feeling it, shooting Pretty, looking Pretty. Pulls up for three, nothing but net, 13-0 Trojans. The hot hand then passes to Zane Paul, he knocks down a three. Botkins with a 16-0 start to this one. Finally, Columbus Grove gets on the board. Blake Reynolds drives and scores to crack the goose egg in the score column. Then Gabe Clement, he gets the steal, finishes with the right hand, and puts that one up and in. Columbus Grove would fight back and close this one later on. However, Pretty with the answer. He drives, takes a ton of contact, still able to finish. Then for the Bulldogs, Tate Bernesser. Hitting the huge pull-up three. That would make it 18 to seven. Moving to the second quarter action. Reynolds backing his man down, scores, gets the hoop and the harm on this one. And then Reynolds gets the offensive board. Long pass, seeing him do that in football, seeing him do it in basketball to Clement for the and one. Then later, Reynolds driving, baseline scoring, picking up the hoop and the harm in this one. That would make it 22-15. Grove fighting back, Reynolds. Keeping them in it, hits the step back jumper, makes it 24 to 20. Then some more defense creating offense. Clement with the steal here and scores, making it a two point game, 24 22 at this point. Columbus Grove climbing all the way back after being in the hole 16 0, but pretty answers. Hits the tough pull up, making it a four point game again. Botkins up six points at the half, had a flurry to end the half. Now, third quarter, Trey Sauter hitting the three, making it 28 to 25, but Botkins had answers all afternoon long. Jacob Plyman with the score down low. Then more action from Pretty with another tough pull-up jumper, making it 34 to 29 here late in the third quarter. Then Brunesser, who's been covered all day, gets open, knocks down the three. He gets points on the board and then Moving on to the fourth quarter, more pretty. He hits another three, making it 40 to 34. Now under four minutes, Zane Paul hitting another three to extend the lead to 11. Paul finishing with six points. And then Plyman with the exclamation point as he throws this one down as Botkins wins their first ever basketball state championship, 60 to 44 over Columbus Grove. Jalen Pretty finishing with 27 points on 10 of 13 shooting for their first championship. We'll send it back to Aaron, Todd, and Mark back in Dayton. Thanks, Patrick. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. We're going to hear from both the coaches uh, as uh, Columbus Grove's Chris Sauter and Botkin Sean Powell join us next here on WOSN.
Welcome back to UD Arena. Botkins, a 60-44 victory over Columbus Grove. Let's hear from both coaches. Obviously, on the losing side, there has to be one today, and it's uh, Columbus Grove. We hear from Coach Sauter now. Then we'll immediately hear from Coach Powell right after that. I mean, you can't get down 16-0 during the regular season, uh, and most certainly not in the state championship game. So uh, you get down 16-0, the final score is a 16-point difference of kind of pretty much says it all right there and our kids worked their tail off to get back into it had it cut to two in the second quarter had it cut to three and uh, late in the third and just uh, just worked so hard to get back into it that we just couldn't get over the hump but um, really proud of the guys and how they competed and battled and um, just after everything they've been through just to get back to this situation and put themselves in a position to play for a state title um, just really impressed with the group of guys and how much work they put in. We won 70 games. That's what I told them in the locker room. I think we won 70 games in the last three years. There's teams that don't get to play 70 games in three years, you know. So uh, they absolutely have nothing to hang their head about. Um, yeah, they've definitely set the bar pretty high for the program. And our younger kids uh, have a lot to live up to. But I think they've learned a lot from them. Hopefully they've learned what it takes to, you know, to compete and win at a high level and hopefully they can be the leaders and role models for the kids coming up. So uh, they've definitely set the, set the tone for the program and um, we're, we're definitely gonna miss them going forward. Yeah, and you know, you seem like we would get a stop, but then one of their bigs would just tip that thing out and they'd get a second chance and an offensive rebound. And um, I don't know how many shots got up on the rim and rolled around and rolled around and fell in. It just felt like, uh, just kind of felt like it was, you know, their time. and. Um, I had this feeling one other time back in 2009 where it's like, geez, out, everything just seems to be kind of going their way. And it did early. And then um, even on some of those free throw attempts, the ball just gets up on that rim and sits there and falls in. And at our end, it just seemed like it won it. But uh, yeah, you got to give those guys a ton of credit. I don't know how many extra possessions they gave themselves with uh, uh, offensive rebounds. But when you give a great team like them extra chances, you're going to struggle to win the game. No, because since Columbus Grove is such a good team and they have great shooters, our concern was them not getting hot to start the game off. Um, I knew if we could get some shots early that we were going to be in a good position, but we were more concerned about their shooters and, and their guys getting, getting shots early. Yes, uh, I don't think that has anything to do with the, the uh, close proximity. I think that has everything to do with our assistant coach, Andrew Davis. Uh, what, he, what he showed me in this, in this tournament run, I will be forever grateful. And it made me a better coach. Uh, and from, from here on out, that's what exactly what we do defensively. And uh, I think uh, it, would, it would give us a good chance in the future to continue the runs like this. Yes, yes. Uh, my, my assistant coach, um, uh, Coach B, as we call him, he, he stays on. He stays on my kids about rebounding, uh, day in and day out. Uh, and, and to come into the state tournament and dominate both games on the boards, uh, it really paid off. Yeah, I, down the road, it 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 it'll hit me down the road. Uh, I just, I'm just glad I have an opportunity to coach young young men, uh, uh, be a part of high school basketball. Uh, it was one of the best times of my life and something that I, I, I don't want to put down just yet. Uh, so the opportunity uh, is, is the best part. The best part about it is I can say, I told you so. <laughs> we had, we've had so many arguments. Uh, I pushed him as hard as I could. And at the end of the road, to be able to say we're champs together, um, it, it, it justifies all that. Guys, obviously, two uh, opposite ends of the spectrum here this afternoon. Coach Chris Sauter, you can see the emotion in his face. You can see it in, in Sean Powell's as well. And, Mark, emotion was something that we pointed out sitting together during the uh, game watching that we saw a lot of things today on both sides of the spectrum. Well, I saw some things that were really cool, Aaron. Uh, starting lineups are being introduced. Tate Burnetzer walks off, and he hugs a couple of two young ladies who I assume are his sisters. They are his sisters, yeah, yes. Yeah, and it's just, just the emotion he showed with those two young ladies. And then when it's time for him to leave the court for the final time, his brother replaced him, and he hugged him. And he couldn't get away from him, couldn't get off the floor. So those types of things. And then seeing the two Plymans go up in the crowd and hug mom and dad. And, you know, dad said, well, you know, I played and we did this. And they hug dad and say, now, dad, we got a championship. It's just kind of those types of things that make this weekend so special. Todd? Yeah, there was another display when Gabe Clement came out of the game. Uh, Coach Sauter 
told him to just let it go. He could see he wanted yeah. to start crying, and he just took him in. So, yeah, it was a very emotional day for really both sides. But for Columbus Grove, you know, last year, uh, unlike Botkins, uh, they lost in the tournament. Botkins did. Columbus Grove never got to finish their season. And they had the intent of coming back and winning it all this year, just like Shawnee the day before. And to, to finally have it come crashing down with a loss is very emotional and I thought the guys held their emotions pretty well but at some point they got to flow free. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. We're going to hear from the players involved as well uh, as part of the press conference with both the coaches. Extended coverage here of the state tournament from UD Arena. We're back with the press conferences next here on WOSN. We started out down 16 nothing. We lost by 16. So we played them even for after that. Um, every time we got close we couldn't get a defensive rebound. Seemed like they would give themselves second, third chances. Um, and then, I mean, give them a ton of credit, you know. We knew their bigs were going to be a problem and we were going to have to rebound if we were going to be able to win the game. And uh, we just didn't, didn't uh, take care of business at that end of the floor the way uh, we hoped. So, um, and then they came out red hot out of the gate, hit like four four straight three-pointers. I don't even know what it was. I know Powell hit three and um, somebody else hit one to put them up 16 nothing. So, like I said, give them a ton of credit for how they came out and started. And then they were able to hit a lot of free throws and um, give themselves second and third chances at the offensive end. And um, so, just, I don't know, questions? You've been a coach a long time. What's the biggest you've ever been behind the starting game? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Today felt like 100 points when it was 16 to nothing, you know, based on the magnitude of the game. I, yeah, I, I don't, I would say that's probably about as bad as it's uh, been in a long time. Bill Coach says a lot about your kids come back from that. Oh, yeah, I mean, we had it cut to two. It was 24 um, 22. And then they finished the half on a 4 0 run, pushed it back to six. I think we had it down to three towards the end of the third quarter. Um, we just, you get yourself behind like that. Uh, you work your tail off to get back into the game, and we just couldn't. We just couldn't get over the hump. And like I said, when you work that hard, sometimes you know the little things that you need to do to get over the hump, um, you're just not able to do. And uh, like I said, give them a lot of credit. They got they're big. Powell's a great point guard, um, and they just they worked hard at the offensive end, and they made everything. Uh, for us at our offensive end, tough to come by. I mean, we had to earn everything. So, um, like I said, all the credit goes to them. It just seemed like they did a good job guarding the perimeter. You guys were never able to up any shooters out there. Yeah, it's – yeah, and they're so long inside that they can um, – we knew that they could get up in you and uh, they can afford to get beat off the dribble when they have, you know, 6'5", 6'5", 6'6", standing back there in the paint. So. Uh, they got guys back there that can protect the rim so they can stay out on shooters, which uh, made it tough for, um, you know, Tate to get going, um, Gabe and Trey to get really going because, you know, when they can just protect the rim and stay home on shooters, it's that's a big part of our game, and we just could not get that going today. the best group of, and I'm sure I'll have some Ada people mad at me, but um, it's the best group of seniors that I've um, been around. Uh, what started out four years ago with, you know, Blake and Tate starting as freshmen and then Gabe starting as a sophomore and Ethan playing as a sophomore. Um, you know, we only won 11 games their freshman year, but by the end of the season, I thought Blake and Tate had really grown into varsity basketball players and uh, we beat a very good I think like 17 or 18 win North Baltimore team in the sectional final which kind of gave them the taste of you know cutting down a net and being successful in the tournament and then to turn around the next three years and make three, three, three straight regional appearances um, going undefeated last year before we got shut down and then to give ourselves a chance to play for a state title today I mean what what do you say about uh, these group of kids? I mean, I feel today kind of the same way I did when my older son graduated because I feel like I have 
my own kids, you know, are done. And it's, it's tough to take, and um, I'm definitely going to miss them. The whole, the whole program is going to miss them and everything they've done for the school. And uh, hopefully our young kids have learned a lot from them and they can kind of carry the torch and uh, pick up where they left off. Um, and continue to be, you know build the program and because they've definitely set the stage for something that can be successful for many many years to come. You guys, just talk about the experience uh, you know, the last three years, you know, four years even, and along the same lines of what Coach was saying, you know, just what will you guys miss about you know coming to work with him every day? Well, I'm just gonna miss being around the guys. There's not a better group of kids in the world and. I'm glad I was a part of it. You, I know they're upset, so they don't talk much. They don't talk much when they're happy. And that's the honest to God's truth. Um, if you watch them play, they're all pretty even keeled and don't say a whole lot. And, um, you know, so this, these are, <laughs> this is who they are, you know. Um, he hardly ever says anything. Uh, Tate doesn't say much. You know, Gabe is our typically our vocal leader, and that's why he's the one that's talking right now because he likes to talk. And um, I'm definitely going to miss hearing him talk a lot next year in the gym. So um, I don't know, Tate, Blake, you guys got anything? I'm just so thankful for this team. I'm gonna miss them all. Uh, they're all my brothers and. Can't believe it's over. <laughs> was there a minute when you got it down to three in the third quarter where it really felt like you were going to break through and this was going to turn for you and, and the rest of the day was going to be a different outcome? Did you have that sense at any time in the game, particularly in the third quarter? Yeah, it felt like uh, when we made our little comeback against New Boston Glenwood, it felt like we were going to make the big play, but credit to them, they made the hustle plays and got extra chances at the rim. and. They, can, they executed well. I think we got called for a moving screen and may have hit a bucket that would have cut it to one or had a shot around the rim, and um, it kind of took the wind out of our sails a little bit. But um, we had chances. We just uh, just couldn't quite get over the hump. But uh, I give our, give our kids a ton of credit, like I said, for battling back from 16 down to even put themselves in a position to – to be in that game, you know, through three and a half quarters says a lot about the integrity and um, of our kids and, and this team, and um, we're just really, really proud of them. Uh, yeah, uh, right off tip, we, we had an offensive flow, hit some early shots. Um, I think uh, because the early shots fell, uh, it interrupted their, their offense, actually, because it made them press a little bit. Um, jumped out to a big lead. They called a timeout, and in the timeout, my coaches were telling our players that uh, we made our first run, but they're going to come back with the run, and this game is going to determine on how we, how we stop their run. Um, I think we did a pretty good job, but other than the turnovers that we had there in the second quarter, uh, they were jumping passes, interrupting our offensive flow when we tried to reverse the basketball. Um, second, uh, in the second half, we went into halftime. Um, we, we just wanted to keep the tempo where it was at. We felt like offensively we didn't have a, a good enough flow. Um, we, we wanted to get the ball down to Plyman. We felt like that was a, a nice mismatch we wanted to um, take advantage of. Um, Jaden came out. He was hot. Uh, he was able to pick that back up there late in the game. Uh, Jacob did a, did a great job on the block, being, being aggressive. Once again, my bigs came through uh, protecting the paint. Um, Carter Plyman, all, all tournament, he has been a monster on the boards. Uh, tonight, I mean, you have Carter, oh, no, no, rebounds. He had 10 last game. He had 10, 10 last game. Looks like he followed up with, with six total. Uh, one big offensive rebound for us. Um, just hats off to Columbus Grove. They're, they're such a tough team. Had a great season. Uh, battled back from injuries. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's a good Good game for Lima Land to see two area teams battling out for the state title. Was there a time when you got up 16 nothing and they went into that, or you went into whatever you went into that you felt like, boy, we don't want to screw this up, you know? Let's let's. Can they look like you were playing not to lose for a while? Uh, yeah. Uh, going 16, going up 16 nothing. Uh, it's easy to 
take your foot off the gas. And um, we, I felt like we did that early in the game. So they're in the late, late in the game. Uh, we decided to just keep keep attacking. They're late in the game where we probably could have <coughs> sat on the basketball. Uh, like I said, Columbus Grove, they're, 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 those kids are going to fight. So as soon as you let up the gas, they're going to come back. So we wanted to just keep the pressure on. Jake, you seem more determined to shoot threes at the beginning. I've seen you live today. You feeling it? And then what accounted for you sort of backing off, asserting yourself after that early run? Uh, they seem to not respect my three ball. Um, going off screens, they would go under, and I was told if they go under screen, stop and shoot it. Um, so, I mean, I can shoot the ball. I shoot at like 30, 49%, I think, or not 49, 40%. So, um, I mean, last game they were coming out and pressing, and I just, I just get what the defense takes me. Of course, I'm probably concerned about you getting in the lane, too. Um, your pull-up jumper, talk about how you worked on that to really be good at that. Uh, I started working on that in like seventh grade, uh, every off season. Uh, my dad, my coach, he, he prepped me for the next level. Uh, he said, college basketball, you need a pull up. So, um, <clears throat> I'm 5'10", so I can't always go to the rim. If there's a bigger guy down there, I have to stop and just pull up the J. Carter, you look a little upset that you don't get credit for tip out rebounds. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was you did that a lot today. Yeah. That ended up being big for you guys. Your thoughts on, uh, the way you and your brother assert yourself probably inside today? Um, it wouldn't just be me and Dan, or me and Jacob. I mean, Dan's over there. Dan did a good job tipping out, too. So did Detoff. Um, I have to give them credit, too. Um, we all did a good job of getting the rebounds. We scouted them, and they, we knew that like, they weren't the best rebounds or best rebounders, and we had better size than them. So we just knew what to do. Jacob, in the semifinal game, obviously, you struggled a little bit. Almost more six points, at least offensively. But defensively, you're still a factor. Right now. Uh, the mindset today was just to uh, find a way to get a win. Uh, it doesn't matter to me how many points you score as long as you're still in the game and affecting it. But I have a great group of friends and a great team around me, so they always support me. And just the big thing that came out of the, those two games, we just got to win. And that's all that really matters to me. Defensively, obviously, Blake Reynolds was one of their you know, focuses, I'm sure, for you guys. What was it like going up against him? And what was the main uh, goal for you in trying to stop him? Me? Well, I'll go first. Uh, yeah, Blake Reynolds. Uh, I've been I've been watching Blake for about five years now. Uh, he's a kid you just can't stop. Um, we just wanted to keep a body on him, uh, try to try to hit him before he gets to the, to the volleyball line there in the lane. Um, watch for the spin uh, and stay on the ground because he, he does a very good job of getting into the lane. And then here comes three or four different moves to get his shot off. Uh, I felt like Zane Paul did a tremendous job um, guarding number three. Um, I don't want to butcher his last name, but uh, Tate, um, I see he finished with six points on, on just two made three-pointers, uh, and that was a big key because that kid can fill it up. So uh, hats off to Zane Paul. He, he did a tremendous job. And uh, we used, uh, we used uh, Denton Homan on Reynolds early. Um, sometimes uh, uh, Dylan Top guarded him as well. And there at the end, we – Carter did did the job to finish. He finished the job for him. Uh, so hats off to, to the entire roster defensively. Uh, Jaden, you guys win this thing, but your, your your performance, 27 points, 10 of 13 shooting. Do you ever imagine anything like this? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't come in the game with the mindset of scoring 30. I'm just gonna do whatever it takes to try to lead my team to a victory. And uh, do you two guys recall Sean's first meeting with you when you became a varsity basketball coach? What did he say was possible? What did um, he say his vision was for the program? I was, in, I was only in eighth grade when he first got here. But I don't remember what he really said to them, but what he said to me, he was like, um, he just said you could be good, but you, you just have to work during the off season. Then you'll be able to play on the varsity court with us. That's what he said to me. Okay, do you remember what he said about the program and what was possible? Uh, yeah, he's always told me that there's something special in the way here, and I he told me that uh, as long as I buy in and continue to keep everyone buying in, 
that we can achieve something special. He's always believed in me like no one else has, and it just feels good that we're finally uh, making it happen. Sean, did you miss playing here by one year at Shawnee? Or... I'm sorry? When did you graduate from Shawnee? Did 99. You missed, you missed playing here by one year. Then... Miss? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. In 2000, uh, um, my, my former teammates made it, um, uh, led by Mike Marshall. I, I graduated in 99. We, we made it to the regional finals. Then you were back here with Perry as an assistant coach? Yes, uh, I believe in 2017. Uh, we, we, we made it here um, and lost in the regional or in the semis to Wellington. Uh, no, uh, I always thought we'd be in Columbus, you know, uh, but uh, I told a reporter before, I, I didn't care if it was in somebody's driveway. A championship is ch a championship. Um, we're from Bakken's, so we're used to playing in, in, in a small a small gym, a small, small town basketball. Uh, so even to come to Dayton and win it here uh, is still tremendous. Fellas, what it feel like out there, man? Uh, like uh, we had to come in mentality. This is a championship game. Um, it doesn't matter where it's at, how many people can come. Uh, if we win this game, we know we're champions. And all the hard work we put in, it, it's finally paid off. Um, today, the crowd uh, was really loud today. I know uh, the past couple teams, Richmond didn't really have that much of, uh, like the whole town came out. And Columbus Grove today, they had their whole town come out, and so did we. So the whole stadium was rocking, it felt like. And Coach Powell caught out a play, or a couple plays, and I couldn't hear him. So I don't know if that was my ears being a problem or the crowd, most likely the crowd, so. Did you guys feel like underdogs coming down here? I mean, Richmond Heights had, uh, you know, the D1 recruit and then every four, and I think a lot of people felt like they were going to win, win the semis. What did you guys feel like was possible? <coughs> I don't think we're underdogs to anybody. Um, <clears throat> the outside may think that, but Dan Homan and Zane Paul, like one of our best leaders, uh, they they just lead us. They say we're going to win like every game, and uh, our confidence is really high. And coaches just everyone just believes in us, all our talent and everything. Jane, doing this with your with your dad, talk about what that means. Uh, <clears throat> in the future, it's in the and right now, it's going to be it's going to be a Great memory. Uh, we get into it sometimes, uh, but a lot of memories have been made. So, and coach, same. Uh, same. same. Um, I, I I've been fortunate to be able to train kids throughout the time uh, throughout my years in basketball, um, and I remember when I was at Perry, I had two two great perimeter players in Orion Monfort and uh, Jacoby um, Lang. Uh, and I remember all season, I, I stayed on them. Everything they, they thought they were doing good, uh, I corrected everything. And, and then comes the tournament, and they had a tremendous run, and that was when they were playing their best ball. And uh, I, so I, I did the same thing with Jaden. I stayed on him. <clears throat> Anything that I thought was uh, out of place or doing wrong, I, I, jumped, I made it. Uh, we, we really focused in on it. Uh, and then when the tournament came, I, I let off a little bit and let him just play. And I think uh, because of I let off of him, he was able to play his game. Jacob staying with the family tie. Obviously, I saw that special moment with your parents. And obviously, you got your brother right there with you. Just tell me what the season has been like of just we're playing alongside Carter and obviously that moment with your parents after the game. Uh, the moment with my parents comes from my dad. He's from Fort Laramie, so he tells me all these stories about how <laughs> Back in his era, they're always winning that stuff, and I all of his stories and all those that he talks about how good that felt with this town. I just, I was always just so jealous of that, and that just feels great that I get to tell the stories. Hopefully one day, and uh, playing with Carter, it feels great because a lot of times, a lot of times during the year, uh, we're playing one on one in the driveway, and that gets pretty heated. Um, I usually I usually win. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, it just it feels great because uh, I wouldn't want to be here with anyone else outside of him, and it's just always something I've looked forward to growing up. Sean, did you get anything special out of, or even get to 
watch their game with Jackson Center. I'm just thinking of Jackson Center is a team you know very uh, well, and Columbus Grove played Jackson Center. Was that extremely helpful for you to have them play somebody that you not only play every, you know, you play, you play a lot? Yeah, I'll, I'll admit this now. Uh, we, we have a lot of film on them, um, and my coaches, they watched all of them. Um, the only game that I watched was the um, Jackson game because they were from, they're similar to us. Um, and I, I knew uh, if we would be able to sprint back and defend, um, they, and make their offense go up against our five, uh, they would struggle offensively. That was our best chance. And, and looking at the numbers, it looks like they shot 26% uh, from two. And uh, that, that's credited to our defense getting back. Yeah. It's different to prepare for an opponent with one day, right? Like, can you three guys talk about it? Did you feel like this was more just a you're playing five guys, or did you feel super prepared even though it was not the same prep that you Nah, I felt pretty prepared for the game. Um, it just didn't start after. We started the day after we beat Richmond. I mean, we had a 5.30 practice um, in some Dayton school. I don't know what the name was. Then we, at 10.30 at night, we went all went down and did some of their plays and went through their plays. We were pretty prepared for it. It, it was a quick turnaround, obviously, but uh, we have a lot. Our coaches are great at feeding us information. So we all just, we all just tried our best to absorb it as best we can. Yeah, for the kids to be able to uh, bounce back from a season like la last year and, and uh, a summer to where they basically was sitting at home uh, and everything is the unknown right now because of COVID and for them to be able to get out there and, and win one and have something, be able to bring something back to the community that's positive feels good. Uh, this is just a start. Um, we we want to build a program that is is based on winning, and whenever people say Bakins, I want them to think think of winning. Um, these guys were the first ones, uh, but there was some a lot of little kids out there that had Bakins on their chest, and they're next. All right, and as soon as we get back, I got 28 days uh, to where I got to stay away from my boys, and on that 29th day, we'll be right back in the weight room. Coach, you talked about how much you've liked the community since you've been in the last three years. But four years ago, what do you know about Bakken's? Um, four years ago, uh, from people from the outside, uh, I heard a lot of negative things. Um, uh, they, they, they struggled as far as wins and losses. Uh, but as soon as, I, as soon as I touched down, man, the community has been nothing but support. Uh, I saw people frustrated with losing. Um, uh, I have uh, dads that, that run our youth program. And if we're not in the gym, they're in the gym. Uh, so when you see things like that, that you know you got kids coming up, that's basketball kids, and you have parents that support. Jane, when you came here with your dad, what was it like just getting to know these kids and getting involved in the program? Oh, yeah, it was a little surprise uh, when I transferred over. It was the last week of my freshman year. Um, right when I came in, everyone, they felt like brothers. They just... They just, they just took me in. Oh, it's like brothers, it's bond. Hey, any more questions? What will school be like tomorrow? No school. No school. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going. <laughs> no school. Guys, obviously a dejection on the Columbus Grove side, jubilation on the Botkin side, but how cool is it to have two teams from our area, even though, you know, Botkins is Southwest District, they're, they're Lima Land area, and you heard me <laughs> yeah. ask, you know, talking with Coach Powell about that, about having two Lima Land teams playing in a final, just having two of those teams on the biggest stage here on State Championship Sunday. Yeah, it was great to see that. And I mentioned this during the radio broadcast on WIMA. I like what's happened with Division Four since competitive balance was instituted. It's returned it to small school basketball. No more Lutheran East. No more Villa Angela St. Joseph. We got Botkins and Columbus Grove. The way it ought to be in D4 basketball. And it was a great representation today for our area and for those conferences. Ultimately, Shelby County gets that state championship. Putnam County doesn't. But uh, no better counties to represent small school hoops.
Well, I would agree with that, Todd. And on top of that, if we had a normal attendance at this 13,000-seat arena, there have been 10, 12,000 people oh, yeah. here, and everybody from Shelby County who would support their program, but then when they lose, go support the Botkins program. And in Putnam County and Northwest Conference, when your team loses, you go support the team that wins. And those people would have been here uh, supporting the community. I'm sure they did from at home with your radio broadcast and so on and watching this particular program, but that would have happened as well. Guys, obviously, we had another Putnam County team here, and Ottawa Glandorf they got you know they just went up against a very good team on Friday night they fell short and then Shawnee as well everyone thought that that D2 state semifinal between Shawnee yeah. and Akron St. Vincent St. Mary was the de facto state title game Shawnee point blank ran into a buzzsaw but how great was it to you guys to have multiple Lima Land teams our teams from <laughs> our area down at the state tournament as it should be. Well, I think that's true, Aaron. I think that happens frequently. That we're able to get teams from Northwest Ohio down here to compete at a high level. And I think for Tyson McLaughlin's team, I think they overachieved this year to get to the state tournament. And I know it was a difficult loss for them. But when you look at the individual parts, yeah, there were some individual things there. But he put that team together that this year and got them down to the state tournament. You know what, guys? Even though uh, other teams made it to the final, I think OG may have played the best any single game of the the locals. They played Lutheran East. They executed yeah. the game plan perfectly. Owen Nichols was a monster in a good way, and that is a Lutheran East team with a ton of talent. And Grove took them to the wire. Uh, Ottawa Glandorf took them to the wire. I think they played about as well as they could have. To Mark's point, and again a salute to Coach McLaughlin. He had his team ready and prepared, and they played as hard as well as they could. It just wasn't enough. And even though they lost, I think they may have played the best game out of any of our locals on that uh, D3 semifinal. Yeah, it was it was a fun weekend to watch basketball here at UD and to get back to normal and the, my final thing for you guys being at UD this is a great venue for the state tournament isn't it yeah I would agree with that I, I'm a traditionalist I always like the fact when they could play it at Columbus but understanding that the logistics of things and knowing it may not happen again this is a wonderful facility uh, it, it's a great sight lines no matter where you're at in this particular place they've been very accommodating to us as well this is a good place to have the tournament well, I'll tell you one thing guys we had a 15 to 1700 people attendance for every game of the state tournament because of COVID limitations but there wasn't one crowd at the shot in the last 20 years that was as loud as mm -hmm. 1,700 here. This is where this tournament belongs. I don't care about logistics. <laughs> Let's just keep it here. Uh, Tim Street, message received, there, there, hopefully. <laughs> Speaking of Tim, we want to thank him for all of yep. his help. He's helped radio, TV, everybody that has been here. Tim has been under the auspices of the last three days and done an outstanding job. We really appreciate his work helping all of us media folk out here the last few days. Todd, special thank you to you. You allowed two of us to tag along. <laughs> hey. You even threw us on a game for D Division yeah. Two. Mark did Division One with you to wrap up the tournament. Just a great year for high school basketball with very minimal interruption. Yeah, great to have you guys along to do the coverage that you can since you can't carry the games on tape delay because of Spectrum. But all this coverage just adds to the experience for these kids and you know you notice it when we see how other people are covered around the state that uh, our guys get some really really good coverage and they deserve it absolutely well, and I'm especially thankful Aaron this is 45 in a row for me and I was trying to figure out how I was going to sneak in and Todd was good enough to help us be a part of this so thanks again absolutely it's been our pleasure to be here the last three days to bring you coverage from the state tournament basketball here at UD Arena a special congratulations again to Shawnee for making it to Ottawa Glandorf to Columbus Grove state runner up in division four and the state division four champions the Botkins Trojans. A huge thank you to everybody involved behind the scenes as well. Zach Keith, Ryan Shadowall, Patrick Campbell are back at the studio giving you highlights. The benevolent overlord Ben Reif, man in the controls and helping us out, plus everybody else who doesn't want their name mentioned. We appreciate all the work that they do. Hopefully you've enjoyed bringing and enjoyed our coverage. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Todd Walker and Mark Shine, this is Aaron Matthews saying we will see you next basketball season. Good night.